Hello grade 10s and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to revise how to simplify fractions. Shelly is going to help us. She is going to start by reminding you that we can only cancel fractions if we have factors. Let's join her. What we have been doing here is simplifying algebraic fractions. Let's try a few more. Remember, we can only cancel if we have factors. Here we go. Simplify ABC divided by AC. Do you have the answer? Let's see. AC is the common factor in the numerator and the denominator. That means we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by AC. So let's do it. Another way of writing this is AC divided by AC times B over 1. And we should notice that the ACs cancel out and we are left with 1 multiplied by B which gives us B. Are you ready now for number 2? Simplify A plus B divided by A. Now be careful here. Let's take a look at the answer. The answer is A plus B divided by A. This cannot be simplified. Why can we not simplify this fraction? We do not have factors to cancel. A and B are terms and not factors. Remember, in an expression, terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. In our previous example, we could cancel because we had factors and not terms. There are no pluses or minus signs in between them. Here comes number three. Simplify A plus AB divided by A. Did you say the answer is AB? Did you immediately try to cancel these A's? No, 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 you can't do this. Let's take a look at why. They are not factors, they are terms. They are separated by a plus sign. In order to cancel the factors, we need to factorize our numerator first. So let's look at the correct way to simplify this fraction. Firstly, we factorize the numerator by taking out the common factor, which is a. Now, a into a, we are left with 1, plus a divided into ab, we are left with b. And this is all divided by a. Now, another way to write this is a divided by a times by 1 plus b divided by 1. And what we should notice is that the a's cancel out and we are left with 1 times by 1 plus b. And this can be written as 1 plus b, which is the simplest form of the fraction. I hope you are beginning to recall all of this from grade 9. We are about to join Shelley again. We now move into more complex fractions. Are you ready? Good. Now let us return to fractions and do another example. Can you simplify this one? 2 multiplied by a minus b plus c multiplied by a minus b all divided by a minus b. Be careful you cannot cancel yet. Why not? In the numerator, you have two terms, separated by a plus sign. And in the denominator, you have two terms, separated by a minus sign. So you cannot cancel terms. But you can see that the numerator can be factorized. You can take out the common brackets. I've already shown you how to do this in the previous example. Firstly, let's factorize the numerator. So we take out our common a minus b and then we are going to be left with 2 plus c all divided by a minus b. Now what we can do is write the denominator into a bracket to make it one factor. And then we can rewrite this as a minus b divided by a minus b multiplied by 2 plus c divided by 1. And as we can notice, the a minus b's will cancel out and we are left with 2 plus c. 
Let's try another similar one. 2 multiplied by a minus b plus c multiplied by a minus b all divided by c plus 2. Again, we must firstly factorize the numerator. So we take out our common a minus b. And then in our brackets, we're going to be left with 2 plus c. And this is all divided by c plus 2. Now, do you remember what we should do with our denominator? We put the two terms in the denominator in a bracket to make it one factor. And now we can rewrite this as 2 plus c divided by c plus 2 multiplied by a minus b divided by 1. And you should notice that 2 plus c and c plus 2 are common factors, even though they look a bit different. So those cancel out and we get 1 multiplied by a minus b, which we are left with a minus b. And as you can see, we have simplified the fraction. You can see that it's now written in a much simpler form. And remember, this simplified form has the same value as the original expression. They are equivalents. This is great, as we are actually revising factorization at the same time. You can see why it is important. Do you think there are examples where we need to factorize both the numerator and denominator? Let's go see. Can you simplify this fraction? a squared minus 9 divided by a plus 3. Well, can you cancel these a into a squared? It's tempting to want to cancel a into a squared, but they are terms. Notice the minus sign and the plus sign, and we can only cancel factors. So, what do we do? Can you factorize the numerator? Yes, it's the difference of two squares. So we can write it as, remember we put our two brackets down, a plus sign and a minus sign, and we find the square root of each of these, so we're going to get a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 3. And that is all divided by a plus 3. Now, what do we do with the denominator? Again, we can only cancel factors. So I put brackets around the terms in the denominator, and now I can cancel because I have factors. So we cancel our common factors, and we are left with a minus 3. And this is the fraction simplified. Let's try another one together. Just concentrate and follow the steps we've learned. Simplify p squared minus 36q squared divided by 2p squared plus 12pq. What can we do with the numerator? We can see it is the difference of two squares. So we factorize it by finding the square roots. So let's put down our two brackets. Once again, we put a plus sign down and a minus sign. Then we find the square root of p squared, which is p, and we put it in the first place in each bracket. Then the square root of 36q squared would give us 6q and we put that in the second place in each bracket. Now the denominator. It has two terms, so we cannot cancel. We need to factorize it. Do you remember how to work with a common factor? We can see that 2 is a common factor. It divides into both terms, so we can write it down. But is that the only common factor? Notice the p is in each term as well. So it's also a common factor. So we can write 2p rather. Now we've got to factorize. So we say 2p divided into our first term. What are we left with? We're left with a p. Plus 2p into our second term. What are we left with? We are left with 6q. Now we've got to look for our common factors. Notice p plus 6q and p plus 6q at the bottom are common. And we can cancel them out. So we cancel, and what we are left with is p minus 6q all over divided by 2p. And that is our final answer. 
always be on the lookout for the difference of two squares when you need to factorize. The first thing you need to look for is a minus sign between the two terms. Then you need to see that the two terms are perfect squares. In other words, that you can find the square root of each of them. Now remember, you might have to take out a common factor first before you recognize a difference of two squares. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about simplifying fractions on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.